He's an insider. He shouldn't, uh, his share shouldn't be borrowable anyway. Let's borrow all the shares and sell it. Ask. <laughs> Call during stream, we can't wait. Uh, I don't want to call the DTC. Fine. Might be issues with wiretapping recording if it's on stream. Yeah, there could be. Um, I, I, I kind of got to agree with that. Hold on. Let me update Reddit on the price action real fast. Imagine we're just tracking this by for the most part. Well, not really. Mm -hmm. Wait, I just got here. What's going on with Fidelity? Read the Daily DD. Might be, uh, I noticed that BlackRock has 18% institutional ownership, which is about 12.6 million. Didn't BlackRock release an updated 13F saying they only had 4 million shares? Is it up? If it's up, it could be because the price of GME is up. Um, remember that uh, BlackRock and Vanguard's shares are in... Um, mostly contained within ETFs. If GME's market cap goes up and those ETFs are reweighted, um, uh, then they need to buy more, right? In order to weight it appropriately. Uh, I don't have DTC, it's the DTC settlement line. Um, Are you saying game exposure from the 19th may still not have hit the tape? It's it's not clear, but it it does it th there is a possibility that it hasn't. And because we haven't seen those in the money puts um that generally indicate a reversal in the price trend, um I'm I'm still open to the possibility that the the game exposure hasn't hit the tape yet. Um but they've also had a lot of time to cover that exposure. 
And I don't know what's really throwing things off here, right? Like we're, we're getting a lot of uh, conflicting data. We're seeing the short interest increase. We're seeing shares returned that were obviously never fucking bought at market. Um, and and my current thinking is, is that either there's not enough liquidity in the stock for them to roll forward. So, so if we're right, right, a lot of our a big part of our thesis is that you know they've somehow taken that old short position and they've packed it into these forward futures um to a obscure it from reporting uh b internalize it c leverage it against their own margin and so it's no longer a debit but it becomes a credit um and this is advantageous in a lot of ways for them obviously right for the First and foremost being, they don't have to report that, you know, GameStop's, you know, uh, 100 plus percent sold short, right? Um, and, but with this deferment, it's possible that that position's exposed um, just because of the time that's been dragging on, right? And if there's no liquidity in the stock for them to, to roll that contract forward, um, then they can't, right? So it... And and this this kind of brought me back to the idea of that gamma ramp that we saw in August, like that that gamma ramp that they or well September I guess from August through September, um, I th that gamma ramp may have been to lock the float up, forcing them to fail, right? But because if they lock the float up and there's no liquidity in this in the spot market, then then they can't roll, right? Like they need liquidity in order to roll the contract. And, and so generally they drive the price up, which brings in liquidity, right? Because, you know, people FOMO in and people buy and that can drive liquidity for them. Um, and then, you know, that can generate the liquidity they need to roll the contract over. As soon as the contract's rolled over and it becomes a credit again, they can immediately short the stock. Um, and so, but, you know, with, without that, and then also possibly no counterparty, right? If the, if no counterparty wants to take on their risk now, uh, due to changes in the underlying, uh, fundamental analysis of GameStop, you know, it's been trading, uh, above a hundred dollars for over a year. The, the bear case by the analysts saying it's worth $15 is looking real fucking slim, right? And the bull case is looking much stronger as the price continues to increase, um, basically on an uptrend since February of this year. Um, and you know, that can make institutions, you know, it starts to give institutions the, the thing they need to buy in, right. And like to, to, you know, shift from neutral to more bullish, uh, on the underlying. And that may mean that nobody wants to be in with Citadel on a short or whoever is holding these futures contracts. And, and that means that, you know, without a counterparty, without someone to uh, assume the risk of that short position, no one to sell it to and no liquidity in the market to roll it forward in order to wait till you can find someone else. Uh, that just leaves the futures contracts exposed, which also leaves them exposed to that FTD cycle that then occurs uh, further out. Can we assume that other, that all other entities, hedge funds, MMs, clearing houses, regulators are working against retail and help cover each other to an extent um they will they will help each other out as much as they can without taking on risk themselves um if it's a decision between uh maintaining the status quo or burning themselves they will they will uh destroy the status quo instead Do you know why eyebrow discs hasn't been mirroring IBKR? And it never has. It's always been a little off. Did cat dip again? Cat's doing okay. It's up from yesterday. Right? Nope. It's not. It's doing shitty. Why am I up? I'm up 6% on mine. I bought them here. That's why. Uh, cat looks like it's climbing back. Uh, Teladoc. Uh, give it some time. It's got to figure out this bottom. That's why I bought so far out. You got to be patient. <laughs> 
This, this is not going to be a short term. If it ripped yesterday morning, then there was a possibility for a short term play here. But um, because it decided to drop and fill that gap, then, you know, it pushes it out to a longer term, but safer play. The explanation you did should be clipped. 